Hey there, it's Lisa here with a video sharing two techniques for the Alta New watercolor brush markers. These are the markers that I'm going to be using. This is the Spring Garden set. And these are my swatches um, that I like to keep in the case with the markers. I find this really helpful to have uh, these color charts here. And then we're also going to be using some stamps. These are the festive silhouettes stamps. I'm going to be using those for the messages. And then this is the Be Strong set. And I'm going to be working with this cactus. As you can see, it's one of my favorite sets. It's pretty well loved. So to get started, I went ahead and stamped that cactus and a sentiment with um, black ink and then clear heat embossed it on watercolor paper. And then I got some markers out to use. I'll have the full list of colors for you in my blog post. I'll have the link up in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And so first I wanted to show you a fun coloring technique with these markers. What I like to do is take a darker color such as this rubellite red and put it on one side. Here I'm doing this pot. So I just put it just along the edge like that. And then I like to take a color that goes with the darker color. Here I'm using the autumn blaze color for kind of a terracotta pot effect. And then I take a damp brush. This is a brush that I just wet in clean water. And starting with the lighter color, in this case that orange autumn blaze, I blend it towards the middle and then I just keep working back and forth between the darker color and the lighter color. So these markers are very vibrant as you can probably see. So I like to start with the lighter color and then blend it towards the darker color and that way the darker color doesn't overpower the lighter color. And if you find that after you've added the water, it gets a little bit faded. You can go back and add more color to it with the marker, just like this. And then you can go back over it again with a damp brush if you want to. You don't always have to do this step. And this is why I like to work on watercolor paper because you get a really good blend that way. So next I'm going to share how to color the cactus. And once again, I'm going to be working with two colors, a darker and a lighter green. This is Limeade that I'm starting with, which is the lighter green. And then I'm also going to be using Emerald. And in this case, I'm starting and I'm coloring with the lighter color almost all the way to the edge. And then I go right over top of that color with just a little tiny bit of this emerald because it's so vibrant, it will really overpower the limeade. And then once again, I'm starting at the edge without the color. This is where the limeade was. And then blending it towards the darker color, just like that. Then I feel like the limeade got a little lost, so I'm going to take the marker and add some more of that light green back. And then I think I'm going to um, go ahead and start on the next pad here. And I'm just going to do these in the same way where I start with the lighter color and then add some of the darker color right along the edge. And now that it's dry, I can see where the first pad that I did of the cactus needs to be darkened up a little bit um, since it dried a little bit lighter. Then once again, I'm going to take my damp brush and just blend the two colors together. So I did each pad of the cactus in the same way where I started with the light color of green and then added some dark color just along the edge and then blended it with a damp brush. So I went ahead and put this in fast forward so I wouldn't bore you just doing the same thing over and over again. And I just wanted to mention too, that I like to work on each pad individually, and that way I feel like it comes together better. And then for the flowers on the cactus, I'm just going to put a little tiny dot of red up in the corner, and then once again, use a damp brush to blend it out. 
This red is so vibrant, you only need just a little tiny touch of it to color that flower. And there you have it. Next, I wanted to show a fun um, background technique. I'm going to make another layer to pop this cactus up on. So I'm just going to be using these markers as markers and I'm just going to make stripes. And once again, I'm putting this in um, fast forward so I don't bore you to death as I just make all these stripes. But I just like to use the same colors that I used while coloring the cactus. So I have the orange, the dark green, the light green, and the red. And you don't have to worry if these come out perfectly because you can go over them with a damp brush and blend them out. One trick with this is you want to do all of the same color at the same time. So I'm doing all of the dark green together and all of the red together. Um, it's okay if the orange and the um, red blend together, but you do really don't want the red and the green to blend together because they'll make a brown. So there's a finished background and I'm just going to let this dry and then I'll be able to pop the cactus up on it. So here is that finished card. I decided not to add anything else to it. I liked the, how the coloring really stood out. Next, I'm going to share another fun technique that you can do with the marker. So I stamped that same cactus on watercolor paper again. And I'm going to be using this Nouveau masking fluid to mask out that cactus because we're going to be making a um, background all over the top of it. And I wanted to make sure that the paper stayed white. And it looks like I had some technical difficulties filming this part. But all I did was put that masking fluid all over the cactus and then I waited for it to dry. And then I got out some markers once again so I'd have them all ready. And I have a scratch piece of watercolor paper over here because you don't want this to be too juicy. You want the um, marker to be a little bit on the dry side so that too much color doesn't come out and make like a blob on the paper. But you're just going to scribble the color um, right across the background. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything because when you put the water over top of it, this will all blend together and look really cool. So I'm just kind of scribbling on here. And this is going to make like a really cool wintry sky. And as you can tell, hopefully, I put some masking fluid um, in the background there to make like kind of little snowflakes like they're falling. Next I'm going to use this, that same brush and some clean water to blend these two colors together. So you can practice this on scratch paper if you haven't tried it before, but it's actually really simple. You just kind of go over it and the more water that you use, the more it will blend and um, kind of mingle together. And it, somehow the colors, when they blend from these markers, they still stay really vibrant and you get some like really cool effects. And since all these colors kind of go together, you can blend them without having to worry about getting one bleeding into the other one. So I'm just going to kind of push this color around just like that. Oh, and you can see where the masking fluid has resisted so that cactus will stay white. So now you just set this aside and let it dry. That's always the hardest part for me is waiting for it to dry. So now it's all dry and I did um, take a paper towel and I wiped off where the marker had dried on the masking fluid. Um, and then you just take your fingers and just rub that masking fluid right off. It comes off super easy. There are some special um, rubber pickup erasers that you can also use for this, but I just like to use my fingers. I think it's kind of fun. You feel like a kid and you get to get in there and just kind of play. And there you have it, a peaceful wintry cactus. So to finish up the card, I just added some embellishments and some glitter.
Oh, and I colored the pot on that cactus the same way that I colored the first one. So thanks so much for watching and happy holidays, you all.